Jamaica is a melting pot of many cultures and for over a century and a half, the Chinese have been a crucial ingredient in our cultural stew. The first set of Chinese arrived in Jamaica on July 30, 1854. They came here basically to work as in indentured laborers in our sugar plantations. Okay, uh, right after 1830, after emancipation, there was a shortage of labor because then there were no more slaves. So the Chinese were, were recruited as indentured laborers to work in the sugar plantations. For the Chinese, adapting to the new culture of the West was initially difficult, but that wouldn't stop them from assimilating. They obviously would have a language problem initially, but uh, you know they, you know they are resilient people, and um, they had to learn the language or a language that they have to get by with. Okay, so. Uh, they, they, they are proven to be quite adaptable. Of course, some missed their home and some got sick and you know, so on and so forth. But by and large, they have adapted very well. In 1905, on noticing the increased population of Chinese immigrants, the Jamaican government passed a law restricting entry to the country if certain criteria were not met. The law passed made it mandatory for immigrants to be registered with immigration authorities before entry. Immigrants also require the guarantor from a reliable shop. This guarantor should be able to prove that the immigrant is law-abiding and will not be a burden on society. Having arrived in Jamaica, the authorities needed to know the immigrant's address and contact information. But that did not stop the Chinese as the numbers continued to grow, forcing the government to impose stricter immigration laws for Chinese nationals wanting to move to Jamaica. But the Chinese still came. At the end of their indentured contract, many Chinese who came opted to either go somewhere else on new contracts, go back to China, or set up shop in Jamaica, literally. For those who stay, you know, they will start the little, you know, called Chinese shop or Chini shop, okay, in, uh, in around the plantation initially, because uh, people who work in, in, the, in, in the plantation, they have to get goods, okay, uh, their supplies, their daily food and stuff, food, food supplies. And that is the origin of really the, um, the, uh, the shop, the Chinese shops that uh, they uh, start up in, in those days. One of the lasting legacies of the Chinese influence on Jamaica is the numbers game, known as Japan. Japan is said to have arrived in Jamaica with the earliest Chinese immigrants in the 1850s. It was restricted by the government as early as 1898. However, this law was amended in the 1920s due to the game's substantial popularity. Today, Japan's meanings are most likely both Chinese and Afro-Jamaican in origin. The game has evolved into what is popularly known as cashpot these days. Jamaican entertainment is a big part of what makes the country a cultural superpower on the global stage, and the Chinese have undoubtedly made their contribution to Jamaica's entertainment landscape. There were quite a bit of uh, uh, music producers, okay, who, who were of Chinese, um, of Chinese connections, if you put it that way, okay. I think uh, they have been involved with the likes of uh, producers for likes of Bob Marley and, and, and the Whalers and uh, many other, many other uh, uh, artists, okay. Well, Brian Lee and the Dragonair, for instance, everybody knows about Brian Lee, about the Brian Lee and the Dragonairs. They have been really a, a, a forerunner or forefather of, um, of the uh, carnival music. Despite being quite immersed in Jamaican social culture, efforts have been made by the Chinese Benevolent Association to keep the Chinese culture alive locally, not only for Chinese Jamaicans, but for all Jamaicans. The Chinese community here, you know, um, they have been involved in really all aspects of our social life. Okay. And uh, at CBA, we have our Chinese New Year celebration, which is celebrated by the, the wider Chinese community as well. Okay? And we have over 2,000 attendees every year for the Chinese New Year celebration, which is hosted here. And um, we have um, music classes here, we have uh, Tai Chi classes here, we have uh, martial art classes here. We have Mandarin language classes here, and uh, not to speak of um, the, 
the, the, the other sporting facilities that we have here, that uh, other schools can come here to participate. The CBA president says the Chinese will continue to contribute to nation building. What we need to know is this, okay, uh, the Chinese have come here for over 150 years, okay, and you find that a lot, of, a lot more Chinese are coming because of the, um, the people who are here already, okay. And uh, let's not forget that we as a people have integrated within the Chinese, or within the Jamaican culture, within the Jamaican society. It's important to note that we are all Jamaicans, okay? But for the Chinese here, we have a lineage, okay, of a Chinese lineage. But I believe that it's important to know that out of many one people means that we are all Jamaican. Reporting for Live at 7, I'm Kenil Gale.